What's going on everybody? Kalipas Tech here, coming back at you with another video. In this video, I'm going to be giving you some tips and tricks for the Cricut Innovate E5G to help you get more familiar with the device. Now, before we go any further, as always, I do want to remind you to hit that subscribe button. And if you want to learn more about this phone, I will be linking to several other videos about it in the description, as well as some information about pricing, availability, and some of my favorite smartphone accessories. But with that being said, let's get into it. So the first thing I want to show you is how to change the wallpaper. This is a really easy thing to do. The first thing we're going to do is go to settings, which you can do one of two ways. First of all, you can pull down the shade like this, and the settings icon is right here. Or if you want, you can also find the settings app. To do this, swipe up like this. And this screen right here is called your app drawer. It's basically going to have all the apps you have on your phone. And then I personally put it on my home screen. In case you don't know, to do that, press and hold like this. And drag it pretty much anywhere you want. So as you can see, I have it right here. And that's pretty much it. But with that being said, to change the wallpaper, go to settings. From here, go to display. And from this menu, as you can see right here, wallpaper is right there. From this screen, it's going to show your current wallpaper. To change it, hit change wallpaper. And these are basically just going to be stock pre-installed wallpapers, or you can choose from your photos. Once you have a wallpaper selected, you can look at the preview of your home screen and your lock screen. And when you're done, hit the check mark right here. And it's going to ask where you want the wallpaper to be. So you can choose either your home screen, lock screen, or both your home screen and lock screen. Now that was easy enough, but I'm going to show you a faster and more convenient way to change your wallpaper and customize some other aspects of your home screen as well. So for this, press and hold your finger on any blank spot on your home screen. So like this. And as you can see, this is going to come up. From here, you can customize your home settings, add widgets, and of course, change your wallpaper. The next thing I'm going to show you is how to manage which apps can send you notifications. Now, this is definitely an important thing to do, especially if you have a lot of apps, because the more apps you have, the more notifications you're going to get. And while some of them can be really useful, others like games, for example, not really so much. And when you're getting a lot of notifications you don't need, not only can this be annoying, but it also makes it easier to miss something important. So to manage your notifications, what you're going to do is go to settings, from here, go to your notification menu, and then from this menu, go to app settings. So this menu right here is going to show you all the apps that have recently sent you a notification. As you can see from mine with this filter, I haven't actually got any notifications yet since I really just set this phone up. So depending on how new this phone is for you, yours may or may not look like this. But if you want to see everything, hit the drop down, go to all apps, and as you can see, now it's going to show all the apps on the phone. So now, of course, if you have something you want to turn off, you can simply toggle it off. And whatever the app is, it's no longer going to send you notifications. Now, keep in mind, as you can see right here, there are certain ones you can't turn off. But in my experience, you're really rarely going to get notifications from these. So in the grand scheme of things, it's not really going to make a difference. The next thing I'm going to show you is how to take a screenshot with the Cricut Innovate E5G. All you have to do is press the power key and the volume down key at the same time like this. And that's pretty much it. This little toolbar is going to show up so you can share it, edit it, whatever you want to do. This is great if you want to crop it, for example. And when you're done, it's going to be saved right to your photos. And another thing I do want to point out, because screenshots, while being pretty similar with pretty much any device, are a little different depending on the phone you're using. So keep in mind with this phone, you don't actually have to hold the buttons. You just have to press them real quick once like this. And again, here we go. The next thing I'm going to show you is how to manage your storage. Now with this phone, we're getting 64 gigabytes of internal storage with microSD card expansion. And while it's not ideal in my opinion, especially for power users, 64 gigabytes for the average user is definitely going to be at least acceptable. But that being said, with stuff like apps, the system, and just files in general getting larger and larger as time goes on, depending on what you're doing with your phone, 64 gigabytes can fill up pretty quickly. So with this amount of storage, it's definitely important to be mindful of what you're actually putting on your phone. So I'm going to show you how to actually view the storage, and that's going to give you a better idea Idea of where you're at so you don't end up running out of space. So to get to your storage, go to settings. From this menu, go to storage. And as you can see, this section is basically going to show you what you have on your phone and what's really taking up the most space. So as you can see, the apps, the system, and games are taking up the most storage. And if you want a more detailed report, you can go to free up space. And this is going to give you more of a deep dive on what's taking up space on your phone. And you can also clean up some junk files. And this not only helps save space, but it can also help your phone run a little bit smoother. The next thing I'm going to show you is how to change your screen lock. Now by default, your screen lock is going to be a pin, which you should get as soon as you set up the phone for the first time. But I'm going to show you how you can change it. So what you're going to do is go to settings. From here, go to security. And from this menu, go to screen lock right here. 
it's gonna have you put in your current pin. And in this menu, you can choose between none, swipe, pattern, pin, or password. None and swipe are basically no security at all. Pattern is pretty cool, but it's also not really that secure. Again, pin is essentially gonna be the default for pretty much any phone that exists in 2022. And if you want really high security, you can always do password. Now, in addition to this, as you've probably noticed, this phone also does have a fingerprint scanner and it has face unlock as well. So if you wanna set those up, what you're gonna do is go back to the main security menu, and as you can see, right under screen lock, face and fingerprint unlock are right here. It's gonna have you put in your pin again. And as you can see, the face unlock and fingerprints are right here. And you can easily turn them on and off from this menu. Now I'm gonna show you how to change your system navigation. Now by default on the navigation bar, we're gonna have the buttons, which pretty much every phone in this price range has. But like any Android phone in 2022, with this phone, you actually do have the option to use gesture navigation instead. So to get there, what you're gonna do is go to settings. From here, go to system. From this menu, go to gestures. And from here, system navigation is right here. So again, as you can see, by default, it will be on button navigation, but if you want, you can change it to gesture navigation. So if we do this, the buttons at the bottom are replaced with this line. And in case you don't know how to use it, essentially, to go home, swipe up like this. To go to your recent apps, drag your finger partially up. And to go back, swipe from the side. So definitely pretty simple, and unlike a lot of lower end phones, gesture navigation actually works real well on this phone. A lot of phones in this price range don't quite have the most sensitive screens, but again, this phone is surprisingly suited to gesture navigation. Now that being said, of course, despite being a bit more modern, and honestly a little bit cooler in my opinion, gesture navigation definitely is not for everyone, and a lot of people do prefer the buttons. But if you haven't already, I definitely recommend giving both a try, because at the end of the day, it's really going to be up to personal preference, and while the buttons are really a classic that pretty much everyone is familiar with, you might end up finding you like gesture navigation better. So again, if you haven't already, I definitely recommend giving it a try. The next thing I'm going to show you is how to use dark mode. Now there are two different ways to do this. I'm going to show you the normal way first, and then I'm going to show you a really easy shortcut. So the normal way to get to dark mode is by going to your settings. From here, go to display. And dark theme is right here. Toggle it on. And now as you can see, we are in dark mode. And if you want from the settings, you can also schedule it. So to do that, go here. And as you can see, schedule is right here so you can have it turn on automatically from sunset to sunrise, or use a custom time. Now that was easy enough, but I'm going to show you an even more convenient shortcut if you don't really care about scheduling, and you just want to toggle it on and off whenever you feel like it. So what we're going to do is pull down the shade twice, and what you can do is put dark mode in this menu, but by default it's not going to be here, so what you're going to want to do is hit this icon right here, from here, go down, and dark mode is right here, so to add it, press and hold, drag it up, And there we go. From here, hit the back button. And now whenever you pull down the shade, dark mode is going to be right here. So as you can see, we are now in dark mode once more. Now the last thing I'm going to show you is how to get to your NFC settings. Now seeing the NFC is already on by default and there's not really a drawback to having it on, you're probably not going to have to mess with this. But in case you ever do, what you're going to do is go to settings. From here, go to connected devices. From this menu, go to connection preferences. NFC is right here. And as you can see, again, NFC is on, but you can turn it off, of course. From here, you can also go to contactless payments. And this is going to allow you to set a default. So if you use Amex Pay, for example, you can set that as a default. But if you don't have a default, it's automatically going to be Google Pay. But this concludes my beginner's guide to the Cricut Innovate E5G. Again, if you want to learn more about this phone, I will be linking to several other videos about it in the description, as well as some information about pricing, availability, and some of my favorite smartphone accessories. But that's it for this video. If you enjoyed it and found it useful, be sure to give it a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button. Don't forget to follow Kalipa's Tech on Twitter and Instagram. And as always, I will see you in the next video.